sing this morning. Sing my heart will, my heart will sing how great. That it's your season. That it's my season. Declare that over your life this morning. I believe, yeah. I believe. That it's your time. That it's my time. It's your time. It's my time. And I can feel it. I can feel it. I believe breakthroughs in the breakthroughs room. Breakthroughs in the room. We declare it this morning. I believe God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Yes. And for I know, for I know that God, God is working is a miracle. who does exceed and abundantly above anything that I can ask or think of and not for what I've done but just because he loves me and I'm a child of the king so I receive his covering goodness and mercy keeps following me and his grace it overtakes any mistakes that I've made and makes me great and not just me but you too it's a reason for everything he takes us through to go to a different level in him blessings on blessings not just tangible but manifesting his power through his spirit living in us Woo! now that's big Jesus said we can do greater works those who believe in him will never be ashamed knowing that when we call up on the Lord there's power in his name to meet the need of whatever it is we going through so we can speak to the mountains and tell them be removed expeditiously because I got things that I gotta do so preparation gotta start right now my God is making a way though I can't see how and no matter what life will bring just know that I won't bow and don't you never ever throw in the towel because your future looking big we declare that this morning it's gonna be big church it's gonna be big yeah and it's gonna be Oh, yes, it is. We declare that. We proclaim that today. Oh, God's gonna, God's gonna open the windows of heaven. Pour me out a blessing. You won't have room to detain it. Don't even try to explain it. But it's gonna be big. God's about to blow your mind. God's about to blow my mind.
something has to break too so right now we declare that God whatever needs to be broken off whatever needs to be broken God that you will break those things in the name of Jesus because I feel God's spirit in this room we have proclaimed and we have declared that our God is big and our God does big things and we have declared that we serve a great and mighty God how many of you know that we serve a great and mighty God today even with everything that we're going through, I yet see God moving in the midst of his people. I still see God pouring out a blessing in the midst of his people. Even during this time, we see God moving. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, move in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we praise your name. Give you glory. Give you honor, hallelujah, God. Feel it in this room, Holy Spirit, move. Cause when you have your way, something has to break. Tear down every lie, set the wrong thing right. Cause when you have your way, something has to break, something has to break, right now in your name, something has to break, something has to break, something has to break. Holy 
depression is breaking. Anxiety is breaking. Addiction is breaking. Fear and doubt are breaking. Suicidal thoughts are breaking. They're breaking, God. They're breaking. They're breaking. We believe it, God. We receive it, God. One believes the lies of the enemy, oh God. One believes the lies of the enemy, God. Something has to break. Lord, uproot those things that are not like you. Uproot those things that are not like you, God. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Something has to break. Oh, oh. Something has to break. Thank you, Jesus. Something has to break. Oh. Spirit move is when you have your way. Something has to break. I feel it in this room. Oh. Holy Spirit move. Holy Spirit move. Cause when you have your way, have your way. something has to break. Oh, I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, because when you have your way, something has to break. Feel it in this oh. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, because when you have your way, when you have your way, something has to something break. Has challenge you right now to lift your hands to him if you can. Whatever it is that's in your life that you need broken, you may not even realize what it is. Can we just take one moment and say, God, here I am. God, here I am. God, here I am. Whatever it is that's in me, God, break it. Whatever it is that's in me that needs to be removed, remove God. We can't sing that. We can't request that without allowing him to do it. So let us do that this morning. Just take a moment. God, here I am. God, here I am. God, here I am. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we worship you in this place, God. We worship you in this place, God. Move by your spirit in this place, God. Move by your spirit in this place, God. Father God, there's some of us that don't even recognize, God, what is going on in our lives. We don't even recognize the pressure that's on our lives right now. Father God, may we just lift it to you this morning. God, you see, you know everything that's going on in this world. You see, you know everything that's going on in our worlds, God. Father God, we lift it to you, God, because some of it is just too heavy for us to bear. Just too heavy for us to bear, God. We lay it down before you, 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 God. Hallelujah. 
can we just lift up a praise to him? Not, not clapping our hands, but just lifting our hands. And can we just lift up a worship to him this morning? We we'll worship you, oh God.
give you the glory, Lord. We give you all the honor and the glory, Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. All worthy and honor and power and glory to the Lamb this morning. You know, church, the scripture declares us and shows us in Revelations 5 that there's thousands upon thousands. And then the scripture says there's 10,000 upon 10,000 with a loud voice and all the creatures and all the elders encircling the throne, declaring worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God to receive all power and wisdom and glory and honor. Be given unto you, O Lord. We declare glory to the Lamb this morning. With one voice, one voice, one voice, we declare glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb, we declare glory to the Lamb. All heaven and earth declares glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Glory to you, Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Jesus. Your train fills the temple, God. Train fills the temple, Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory. We worship you. We worship you. You know, it's in times like these that we sense this awesome presence of the Lord. That's where we can find our strength renewed. Maybe you've gone through a week of full disappointment or stress or unbelief, disbelief. Situations have come up in your life and you're thinking, I can't believe I'm walking through this. And you're battling in your own mind. Where's God? Where is he at this point? I don't see him moving. I don't even feel his presence. And then you get the opportunity to rise from your bed this morning and see his craft across the sky, his handiwork in your life that the very, your very body just receives the breath of God this morning to rise and then you fight through your own mind am I even worthy to, re- to, to even rise from my bed this morning and then you see God just begin to move in your life and awaken your senses and then you begin to say to yourself it's only been by the mighty hand of God that I'm here today it's only by his mighty hand that he's touched me once again It's only by his mighty hand, once again, I'm safe. And maybe you're watching by stream this morning and you're going through a time, or you know someone who's going through a time in their life where maybe maybe the very breath is just being taken from them minute by minute. And you've seen their life. And you've seen God do things in their life over and over and over again. 
Those are the times, folks, where we need to say glory to the Lamb. We need to say glory to the Lamb. We need to thank God and say glory to the Lamb. God, we thank you today. We thank you today for your grace and your mercy that's covered us. We thank you for that word that you brought to us when we needed to hear from you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you set our feet upon a solid rock and we will not be shaken. We won't allow the enemy to take one more inch and, and lie to us one more time. Because we've received the word of the Lord. And he's come and he's comforted us. And he's made a way where there seems to be no way. And may I declare to you one more time. It's going to be big today. It's going to be big on your behalf today. It's going to be big coming your way. The breakthrough is on the way today. The healing is on the way today. We declare healing over your body today. In Jesus' name, rise up and walk today. Rise up. Declare the glory of the Lord, for he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. We say glory to the Lamb for the peace of God. We say glory to the Lamb for the blood that was shed for us today. We say glory to the Lamb of God for His hand of protection upon our lives. We say glory to the Lamb for His hand of provision over our lives today. We say glory to the Lamb, Father, for who you are and making us a way where there seems to be no way today. We sing glory to the Lamb. We sing glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Come on, lift your voice. There's something inside you that says glory. Declare it, declare it. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. I just feel that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And I just feel that God is moving through the airwaves of the stream that you're watching by this morning. And we just want to encourage you this morning to see that God is moving on your behalf today. God is big. He's a big God today. I serve a wonderful God today. I serve a mighty God today. I serve a powerful God today. I serve a healing God today. I serve a living God today. And I want to tell you this morning, this miracle that he has coming your way, it's going to be big today. It's going to be big today. So reach out, declare it this morning, and give him praise one more time. Come on, church. Let's give him praise one more time. Hallelujah.
Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. You know, church, in times like these, when we need to hear from the Lord, he has a way of speaking to us through his spirit, where he'll use the gifts of tongues and interpretation according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 and Acts 2. We believe the Spirit of God has been left with us for a purpose, to lead us and guide us and speak to us and bring us a word in the time of season in which we walk in. God is faithful to his promise today. I don't know who needed to hear that word, but I'm so thankful today that we're in the house of the Lord to hear the word of the Lord today. Can we give the Lord one more praise this morning? Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. We want to be sensitive to the Spirit of God because I, I sense his, pre, his rich presence in the house of the Lord this morning. But we want to just welcome those of you who are here for the very first time. Maybe this is the very first time that you've ever attended Sheffield Family Life Center. We want to welcome you this morning. If you'd be so kind as to raise your hand today. We'd like to acknowledge that you're worshiping with us today. Any first time visitors today? Amen. See him back there in the back. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering for these that are here today. Amen. We want to welcome you to Sheffield Family Life Center. Pray that the Lord bless you and he encourages you today. For those of you who are still standing in the sanctuary, just greet somebody, wave at them, let them know it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. For those of you who are watching my stream, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in this morning. By way of stream or by uh, YouTube or Facebook, however you're watching our service this morning, we just pray that you'll be encouraged today. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm telling you, God is doing something incredible as we are in his presence. And I just want to tell you, spend time in the presence of the Lord and see what he won't do on your behalf today. Amen? Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. I just want to encourage you, if you'll be so kind. Let's turn your attention to our screens. We have some announcements for you today. Good morning, Sheffield. Thanks so much for being with us again for another beautiful Sunday, whether that's online or in person. We have a great service plan for you. But first, we have some things that we want to let you know about. So here are your announcements. Our East Campus at 740 Blue Ridge Boulevard reopening Sunday is today. So if you're with us this morning, please be praying for them. And if you'd like to head over at the 11 o'clock service, please do so. We've had the awesome opportunity to partner with Truman Medical Centers to distribute fresh produce, vegetables and fruit completely free. So if you're interested in receiving one of these fresh produce boxes, please contact Yoli at the church office. We'll be distributing these items till the end of August. I know that we say this all the time, but we can't thank you enough for your faithfulness in giving. If you would like to continue to give, you can do so in a few different ways. You can always tithe online at sflc.net under the giving tab. You can text your tithe at 816-266-4848, enter any giving amount and follow the prompts it gives you back. You can also mail your tithe at 5700 Winter Road, Kansas City, Missouri, 64127. And if you're in the building with us today, don't forget to grab your offering envelope, put any loose cash or change or debit information into that envelope, seal it up and drop it in the white receptacle boxes on your way out. I hope that you have a great rest of service, Sheffield. Love you, continuing to pray for you. Amen. Thank the Lord for everything that's happening right here at Sheffield Family Life Center. Just want to encourage you to get involved, be here when the doors are open, and let's declare the glory of the Lord. Amen? Amen. You know, my prayer is, is that the Lord would break this bondage of fear that people have today. I know we need to use wisdom, but I believe that the enemy is using this as a tool to keep people out of the house of the Lord. And so as you pray, I want to encourage you to pray that the enemy's tracks would be stopped. That his movement of causing fear 
would be broken in Jesus' name. How many of you believe that this morning? For those of you who are watching by stream, we love you. We truly understand what you're going through. But we sure would love to see you in the house of the Lord. And we just want to declare the peace of God over you and your household today. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to continue in your worship this morning and giving. And I just want to encourage you this morning. As the Bible says that if we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You know, I was thinking about where the scripture says in Psalms 19 that a generous person will see the blessing of the Lord. And we can only see that as we are generous in our giving, amen? I've seen a lot of generous people, and I've watched their life. And I've seen a whole lot of you, and I've watched your life. God has been faithful to you, amen? You have learned the blessing in giving. And I just want to encourage you. Maybe you're watching by stream and you've struggled with being consistent. Be consistent in giving to the Lord and see what he won't do on your behalf this morning. This morning we want to just pray and ask the Lord to bless our first fruits. Amen. This tithe and this offering. Father, we're so grateful today that we have this opportunity to give to you what is rightfully yours. We pray that you have blessed both gift and giver in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church shout amen. After the service this morning, please be mindful that you can place your love gifts in the receptacles in the middle aisles, and you'll see the boxes before you exit the sanctuary. Amen. God bless you. Let's receive uh, the worship team this morning. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own, Sing, Caleb. every time I try to stand and start to fall, and all those lonely roads that I have traveled on, yeah. there, there was Jesus. When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now That there was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or could have seen it, there was Jesus. For this man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay Well, I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day That there was Jesus In the way, in the search the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus on the mountain, in the valley. In the shadows of the alley, there was Jesus. In the fire, in the flood, there was Jesus. Always is and always was. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or could have seen it. Oh, in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, 
Amazing song. Thank you so much. Magnificent. Great to have you here today. Thanks for being in the house. Thanks for uh, tuning in wherever you are. Uh, we're honored to be able to spend a few minutes with you, and we appreciate you, appreciate you taking time for us. Well, I'm going to give a little fist bump to uh, those at home especially, but in the house too. Some of you, I get to greet you when you leave, so that's good. But uh, yeah, These signs, you probably saw them uh, driving into the property, driving into the campus. Uh, these are yard signs. We went out this week, the pastors went out this week, and we were able to, to put them in some yards. If you did not get one in your yard, I, I apologize. We had lists that were by zip code, and we went out and did, you know, hit different areas, and we couldn't get to anywhere near everybody. We, you know, not even 10% really, but we were out there trying. So they are here. If you want to get a yard sign today, they should be in the lobby. If you want to pick one up and put one in your yard, I have one in my yard and uh, proud to, to display that. I'm not a big yard sign guy, but I'm going to put that one in and already have. And, so, and, it's, and it's still there. I, every morning I think, okay, did somebody kick it down in the night? But it's, uh, it's still there. So they are out there. We would love for you to have one. And this is actually, you know, the goal for this was not to proclaim the name of Sheffield. This is not, we didn't do this for advertising purposes, though it does that. We did this just to be able to tell you and remind you that we love you and that we are family. We're all in this together as Sheffield family. So that's really the intent of this. And it also advertises, which never hurts. I, uh, I felt like I, wanted to, I need to pray for, for one thing specifically, and, and, and I, I know it's for somebody out there listening in and probably for someone in the house as well. But uh, the word displaced came to me. I felt like God wanted me to, to say a special prayer for, for someone or someone's uh, just that word displaced. So we're going to pray about that right now, and that's going to that's going to uh, speak to somebody. Maybe you feel displaced, or you've been displaced, but you're in that spot, and that word is like that's that's it. That's where I'm at. Heavenly Father, I pray, I pray that uh, whatever this displacement is, whether it's work related, family related, home related, financial, what, whatever it is, God, I know this is for somebody today. This prayer is for someone. So, God, I pray that this strong sense of displacement that's probably creating discouragement and all kinds of extra warfare and stress uh, be, the, uh, be the all in all, be the answer, be the direction. God, I pray that you be the compass out of this displacement and even in the middle of it because it's not over yet. So, God, I pray that you would do this for that person or these people. Lead them, guide them, let them know that uh, there you are. There is Jesus right there with them today, tomorrow, now. Next week, uh, you are the God of the now, and you're the God of tomorrow. We thank you for that. So minister to that person, to those people. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in the Architect series, and I'm going to quickly, I'm going to give you a condensed, a condensed, a concentrated version of this. And uh, this message uh, really is very simple. This is a very simple message but this is, the, this is the antidote right here. This is the antidote. There are, times, there are times that we have to make decisions that could cost us everything unless God shows up. Have you ever been in a spot where you know, I am making a decision, I'm about to make a decision that could cost me everything if God doesn't show up? Have you been there? If God doesn't show up, the, the price tag is going to be huge on this. Make a painful decision, and God's the only relief. And it can be perplexing at times because it seems like God is driving it, yet He's the answer. So, God, you're propelling this, but you're the answer. You're the, you're the motor. You're the propeller. You're also the anchor. And if I need it, I'll put up the sail, and you'll be a sail. How can you be all of those things? The next step in, in architecture that I went to in Genesis last week, we were in Genesis chapter 6, the great flood, Genesis 22, 22. 
verses 1 through 8 say this, God tested Abraham's faith. This is not tempting, this is testing. There's a difference. God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called out. He replied, yes, here I am. Here I am. Seems to be the right thing to say. Here I am. As we see Samuel later on. Take your son, this is God telling Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much. Go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. I don't have time to tell you how horrible this would be to hear this command. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey. He took two of his servants with him along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering. He set out to the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, they traveled for three days to get to this place. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up, saw the place off in the distance. He told the men with him, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I, my son and I, will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. Sacrifice is worship. That's why we call offering worship. That's why we call serving worship. That's why everything we do as sacrifice unto God is worship. That's what it is. So he said, my son and I are going to worship, and then we will come right back. You can go ahead and circle or highlight or just remember, we will come right back. Because you know he had already been told, you're going to sacrifice your son. But he said, we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the bird offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, and this would be, this would be the part that the tears would begin to flow. Father, yes, my son, we have the fire and we have the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Verse 8, Abraham said, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And they both walked on together. A test is kind of a checkpoint to find out what we know. A test is designed to demonstrate proof of what we know. This was a test from God, proof of what you know actually proof of who you are. So God is the architect of such things as he was here, but he's also the solution. So is that manipulation? If God is telling me to go here and then I have to depend on him to go here and he worked this and he worked this and he's going to work this, is, that, is he the master puppeteer? Is this master, uh, master of manipulation? No, it's not. It's mentoring. It's leadership. It's discipleship. It's teaching. When a teacher gives you a test, some of you in the room are probably teachers or have been. When a teacher gives you the test, they know the answers, but they're also ready to answer questions and help you if you have them. They probably designed the test. You're taking it. They know the answers, and they're there to help you. So this is an amazing demonstration of teaching, and for those of you who struggle with that piece of, does God just manipulate us into everything, this is not manipulation, this is demonstration. So God is the architect and the solution. Plato, uh, one of the great philosophers, and you know, we, get, we get kind of crass when we think of philosophy and Christianity or philosophy and theology, but Plato was a great influence on Christianity, and he lived approximately 424 to 347 B.C., he said this, all the workers work under the direction of the architect. Much depends on the wisdom of the architect. So we walk it out, but the wisdom of the architect determines a lot. Abraham's journey to Mount Moriah had been designed by God, but also depends on God. Mark this down. Log this in your mind. Your journey has been designed by God, but is also dependent on God. Don't forget those two things. And again, is that manipulation? No, it's demonstration of who He is. 
So how do I pass the test? That's the question. That's the question. How do I pass the test? I remember in college more than much more than, than any, any uh, level before that, when somebody would take a test in a class you had prior to you taking it, you would ask, how hard was the test? What was it? And the worst were when it, when it was all just subjective. Multiple choice was wonderful because you had a chance, even if you didn't study. True and false was just, that is like, that's divine right there. Because you got a 50% chance every time. But those that were just subjective, answer the following. Oh, man, I'm, that means I'm going to have to write so much that the teacher gets so tired of reading it, they just say, fine, you got that one. How do I pass this test? Well, it's right here, and I'm going to give it to you, and it's as easy as one, two, three, and it's going to be quick, but you need to remember this, and it's right here in front of us, verse 7, verse 8. Number one, fire. How do I pass the test with fire? Fire is desire. Fire is the initiative. Fire that, that Abraham was carrying was what was going to drive all of this. Burn the sacrifice. Represent the purification of God. The sacrificial power, the, even the oil of the Spirit. Fire was driving this. Fire is the initiative. So do you initially have the fire to move forward? We had that opportunity today in worship. God, I surrender myself to you. So am I, am I carrying fire? God, I need you. God, I surrender myself to you. Or am I carrying water? God, I don't even want to hear this. I don't have time for this. I don't feel like this this morning. I felt horrible when I woke up. I don't really want to be tuning into this or be sitting in this auditorium. I'm not into this. This is not where I am this morning. You need to drop the water and pick up the fire. Because the fire is what's going to ignite it in you. To say, God, I want you to be first in my life. God, I need you to purify my mind, my heart, my direction. I need to hear your voice. God, I need to be driven to you. So the first one is fire. There has to be fire, the drive, the motivation. Number two is the firewood. Because fire cannot burn without something to consume and oxygen driving it. So the firewood in your life is relationship, is word, is prayer, is communion with God, is service to God. I don't want any response on this because I'm not trying to indict anyone. But undoubtedly, there are some of you hearing my voice right now, the only time you really give God any time, any room, any space is on Sunday morning. Well, I expect to be an overcoming Christian. I expect to be blessed and not have, well, I don't, I don't sacrifice for God. I don't serve God. I don't give to God. I don't honor God's commandments. And I don't, I don't hear God's presence during the week. That is kind of like golf for me. I expect to golf twice a year and be a scratch golfer. That's what I want. I want to go to the driving range a few times I want to be on the golf course two or three times a year when I have to go out with people, and I want to play par golf. Guess what? It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Because golf is the one sport, the harder you try, the worse you do. It's not a sport. It's an event. It's an expensive event. But I expect to not give it any time but to be a good golfer. And anytime I golf, I'm with people who golf a lot. They give it time, and their game shows it. Because driving is fairly easy. Putting is pretty simple. That short game will kill you. The irons in the fairway, around the green, you don't get very lucky with those. And that's kind of the way it is with God. God, I expect to show up and give you opportunity once a week. But I want everything to be great. I want to walk according to your will. I want to be blessed by you. I honor you. I praise you in the temple. Well, what do you do outside the temple? You've got to give God some firewood to burn. You have to have some drive. You have to give him something. 
learn about God. Learn what relationship with God is. Learn how much God loves you, and that will change your outlook on the rest of it. Because that's really what changes it for us, especially if you're contemplative. When you finally realize that God does love you in spite of, it changes the way you see God. One fire, two firewood, number three, and this is the foundation, verse 8. This is this verse, I had trouble reading it the first time straight, but I knew I was coming back to it. This is what Abraham tells Isaac. This is amazing. This is who I want to be. This is who I want you to be. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering. See, we don't see it right now. You don't see it right now. Some of you right now can't possibly see the offering that's coming. But we need to be able to say, we need to have the faith to say, God will provide. God will provide. I don't see it today. I don't sense it today. I don't know where it's coming from today. But I do know this. God will provide. Three words. Turn to the person next to you and say, God will provide. Absolutely will. God will provide. He will provide, and I want that to be the foundation of everything I do. Coming into this COVID thing, it's kind of ironic because we sang that song big like the week before all of this started, back in March. And I remember two or three people that day telling me, God is going to do something big. And and we didn't know what we were walking into. And I can tell you this, throughout these last four months plus now, every week, we at Sheffield, you as Sheffield, you as family, we as family have been able to say, God is providing. God will provide. Well, what if people don't come back to church? God will provide. What if we can't do what we, what we were doing before? God will provide. What if I don't have any offering to give because I've lost all my income? God will provide. What if I get sick? What if my family gets sick? What if somebody gets this? God will provide. What if I lose my job and I don't know what's next? God will provide. What if I get lost and I, and I get confused and I get distracted and I mess up? God will provide. God will provide. There's no question. He will provide. And the fact that these doors are open today is proof that God will provide. And I tell you this, as your pastor and the shepherd of this house, appointed and anointed by God, if this never looks like it looked before, God will provide. And I've told you before, if this property disappears and we have to meet in one of the other campuses, God will provide. If we have to meet out here on the grass under a tent, God will provide. Because it's not about this, it's about this. Fire, firewood, and faith. Let me give you three other words for those of, you, those of you who are a little more analytical. Desire, data, and dependence. Those are the three things. Desire, content, God will provide. The architect will do what the builder cannot. So whatever's going on today, God will provide. God will provide. Bring the fire. Bring the firewood. Show up to the right place because God didn't just tell Abraham, go out somewhere and do this. He said, go to a specific place and I will show you where to sacrifice. Why? Because he knew in that place. Think about this. God knew in that place at that time there was going to be a ram caught in the thicket There was going to be a ram caught in a bush of thistles that was going to become the sacrifice. 
So go to the appointed. God says go, you go. God says stay, you stay. God says move, you move. And he'll provide. Because he's already setting up and preparing the sacrifice for you when you get there. What's there? I don't know. Where is there? I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going at this point. I just know God will provide. I don't know what the next five years of my life looks like. We might be in house churches two years from now. Honestly, we don't know. But guess what? God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. And I know that. I've learned those three words. And I believe those three words. Stand with me if you would all over the auditorium, please. We so desperately need God. Pray this with me in the house. Pray this with me wherever you are. If you feel at all compelled to do so. Pray this with me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I need you. I desperately need you today. And I know you'll provide. So I ask you to purify my heart, my mind. Give me a new direction if I need it. A new destiny. I know you'll provide. So I surrender myself to you again today. I commit myself to you. I choose again to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I once again accept the sacrifice, the death of your only son for my sins. Give me direction, strength, and encouragement. Lead me and guide me in Jesus' name. Amen. And God, I pray, I pray that you will lead and guide us and seal this in our hearts today. Seal this in our hearts today. Lock this in for us. You will provide. And God, I pray that you would speak to people about the fire, about the firewood, and about the faith in their life, in their walk, as we journey following you. And those who are displaced, God, speak to them especially today. In Jesus' name. Pastor Willie's going to give you a blessing, speak a blessing over you, and I look forward to, to greeting you on the way out. Come on, church, let's give the Lord a praise offering for that word this morning. Wow. I'm telling you, he truly is the architect, and we need to remind ourselves that God will provide. That word will encourage you this week, and I hope that you're able to chew on it throughout the week. And just hear yourself say one more time, God will provide. For those of you who are watching by stream, we say to you one more time, God is the architect and he will provide for you. This morning, I just want to encourage you, if you'll be so kind, just to lift your hands this morning as we pray this prayer blessing over you. Father, we come before you and we pray your blessing over your sons and daughters. As they leave your house, as they go into their mission field, I pray that you'll bless everything that their hands touch, God. I pray that you bless them in their finances. I pray that you open up the heavens above them and pour them out blessings that they cannot contain over them, their families. Father, I pray that you would just allow them to go in the peace of God and allow them to see that your face will shine upon them. Father, be compassionate towards your sons and daughters, we pray. And we thank you in Jesus' name that they'll walk in the peace of God and under your blessing in Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen this morning. Let's give the Lord another praise offering. We want to thank you for making your way into the house of the Lord this morning. I'd just like to encourage you as you leave the house to be mindful and body spacing and be respectful of those in their territory. Amen. God bless you and you go in his peace.